What's up guys, Stu here. So today is the 10th of October 2018, which can mean one thing and one thing only, and that is that the London Film Festival 2018 has well and truly been kicked off by widows. I, I'm, the film, not just a group of, of women without husbands, that'd be terrible. So Widows is the latest film from Steve McQueen, who's a director that has done some films, which are good. Those films being 12 Years a Slave, Shame, Hunger, I mean, the dude's great, he's a fantastic director, I was very excited to see what he's going to do with this one, because, I mean, it's, it's a little bit of a curveball for old Stevie Boy, you might say, and that's because it's based on an 80s TV series of the same title, which basically tells a story of a group of widows that end up trying to pull off a heist. Doesn't exactly scream Steve McQueen, does it? So the wonderful Viola Davies heads a incredibly crazy strong cast here, uh, no exaggeration, it, what a cast. It's the sort of film where for the first 20 minutes, every scene that comes on, you're thinking immediately to yourself, oh, you're in it as well? You're in it as well? You're and they're all great. Everyone is giving really solid performances here. All fantastic. I mean, it goes without saying that Viola Davies delivers the goods here. Gives another fantastically strong, emotional, powerful performance. God damn it, Viola. Get some ruddy tissues, please, will ya? I mean, the big stand-up for me here was Elizabeth Debicki, who plays this abused wife, uh, and she is, she's fantastic in the film. She really did steal pretty much all the scenes she was in, and I really enjoyed her back and forth with Viola Davies in the film. I thought the two of them were particularly strong. I would have loved to have seen more Carrie Coon, but I'm not going to hold it against the film, because I, I, I don't feel like it's essential, but I just love Carrie Coon so much. So if we could just get her in more of every film, immediately every film goes up a notch. Seriously, ever since The Leftovers, I'm well and truly on that Carrie Coon train. I was going to say something different there, and I thought, <laughs> that might sound terrible. But there's also folks like Colin Farrell, Liam Neeson, Daniel Kalia, who, side note, gives a fantastic performance as usual. God damn it, I love you, Daniel. And the best thing is that all their characters, because of their performances, but also because of the writing from Gillian Flynn here, feel so layered and intricately woven, and, and just, just real. Messy, real, intricate characters. What more could you want from a screenplay? Yeah, but I guess it's not really any surprise that it balances that really well with the thriller side of things as well, given that we've got a screenplay from Gillian Flynn here. Uh, motherfucker did Gone Girl, right? She, she can just, can she, she can just do all thrillers from here on out, and I'll be all right. I'll be fine with it. And in typical Flynn fashion, at first you think you know exactly where it's going, you think you've got it locked down, but it does evolve in many different ways. The narrative takes many different plots, many different plots. That's not how to English. Let's try that one again, Stuart. It takes many different plot twists and turns. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Alright, come on, hold it. But whilst this is all happening, the dialogue between the characters is really, really good. Very quick, very tight, very witty, very funny in a surprising way. That's one of the main things that surprised me about this film. I did not expect to laugh as much as I did through this film. It's got a very interesting and, and, and kind of dark, pulpy sense of humour to it all, which really, really worked and ended up being very crowd-pleasing. Which was surprising. I didn't expect to be sat in a full auditorium with people having a good old chin wag at these widows having a horrible time and having to plan eyes. But Steve Roddy McQueen, man, motherfucker pulled it off. And his direction here is strong as ever. I mean, with his previous work, we knew this dude was good behind a camera, but here he absolutely carries that on. Right from the opening sequence, which is this fantastic kind of cross cut sequence between a heist going wrong and introducing us to all these individual uh, wives of the people in the heist. It, it's fantastic, but right from there onwards, you're like, yeah, this dude knows what he's doing. And we're going to be in for something a little bit more interesting than our usual heist film. And it's really great and satisfying to see him get stuck into the more kind of pulpy elements of the genre here. Uh, but it's also great to see that he hasn't lost a lot of his technical flourish that made him so great as a director in the first place. I mean, despite being this kind of plot-twisting thriller about a heist, it still takes a lot of time in the slow moments and there's lots and lots of long takes in there as we'd expect from Steve McQueen. And like a lot of his previous work, it's one of those films that doesn't shy away from the violence. Uh, it, it, it's brutal in, in all the right places, this film. It's not a constantly in-your-face brutal film, but when it happens, and it happens. You're like, that is a thing I've just watched on a screen. 
Oh, can we skip past that? But it never feels gratuitous, which is very important for the subject matter of this film and the way that this film presents all of that. Yeah, it absolutely works. But it's all of those things that we've come to appreciate about Steve McQueen's direction, paired with the very tight dialogue and the typically twisting narrative of a Gillian Flynn screenplay. It just works wonderfully, makes for an incredibly riveting couple of hours. I was never bored once. And the great thing is that it can be that kind of exciting edge of your seat heist thriller, uh, while still tapping into these kind of deep thematic things that Steve McQueen's known for showing in his work. It's still there, it's not lost in a mix, and it's unafraid of its kind of gender, racial, and class politics. It's, it's bleeding throughout every scene in this film, and it makes for that much more of an enjoyable and rich cinema experience than just a typical heist film. I don't think the film is without its flaws though, however. One of those for me was the very end of this film. It's not that it's a bad ending, I was satisfied with it, it did the job overall. Um, but I just, I felt it, it left a little bit to be desired there. It quickly wraps it up and it finishes in like, ah, oh, I think I would have liked, I, I would have liked to have seen a little bit more past the uh, climactic moment of the film. And something else that sort of bugged me upon reflection is that it does tend to drop characters here and there. I, I mean, it's not always obvious, but after a certain amount of time goes by and you're like, I haven't seen that guy for a while. Have we just forgot about that little story thread? It didn't really have that much of a negative impact on my viewing experience, but I think upon reflection, it's something I think could have been wrapped up a little bit tighter in the screenplay for me. But really overall, I had a great time with Widows. Yeah, big fan, absolutely excited to see it for a second time. But what about you guys? Have you seen Widows yet? If you're seeing it over the course of the film festival, please let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. I'd love to know. If you want to hear some more in-depth thoughts from me on Widows, Tune into the Shoe Talks podcast later on in the week. I think it will probably come on Sunday or Monday, uh, where I'll be talking, well, about widows in more depth. But yeah, if you haven't already, Shoe Talks pod on Twitter. Follow me on there. Links in the description. Just make sure that you won't miss the episode when it does go live. I'll be talking about widows and a couple of other films from the film festival in a load more detail for you guys. If that's something that you can dig. As usual, if you like this video and you do want to see me talk about more shit, please consider clicking subscribe. It really helps me out. And also click that bell button if you fancy that because buttons are always fun. And with that, we kick off the London Film Festival 2018 content over here on the channel. Look forward to a review every day. Tomorrow, I think it's going to be for Wildlife. Incredibly excited about. But going forward, we've got films like Beautiful Boy, Suspiria. Honestly, loads. I think there's about 30 films. Get excited. Make sure you're tuned in every day for a new review from me there. But until next time, stay beautiful, mother truckers.